So I thought um, we'd do an experiment. Uh, now I'm afraid for those of you who didn't follow any of the Star Wars stuff, this is a little bit Star Wars based and it does require a little bit of background understanding. I, I encourage you to look at Wikipedia um, at any time to, to get some background. I'll try and cover it. Uh, in, in the Star Wars movies, um, there, there is a, a Republic and they have an army of clones. Uh, and, and you can see one of these clones. Here. That's a clone, a clone trooper. And he fights for the Republic, the Republic of the goodies. And so he, he's a goodie. But then there's an evil emperor. And these guys are all programmed to be um, loyal to this emperor. But no one knows that he's evil until he shows his true colours and takes over the Republic and turns it into an imperial empire. And suddenly, these guys become stormtroopers. So they're all clones. So, okay, this is a little bit far-fetched. So what we have is... Uh, from a galactic uh, a republic era, which is the olden days, and an imperial empire, which is the current time, um, we had clone troopers who then became stormtroopers. There we go. Clear? And you're thinking, why is this important? It's very important. So both clone troopers and stormtroopers are genetic clones of one individual called Django Fett. Actually, I should point out the reason I, I'm giving you this background is not, not just because I find it um, brilliant. It's because uh, in se I'm, I'm trying to model, in setting up an experiment and writing about our experiment, we're writing an introduction to this experiment. And so this is something we have to do. Um, okay, you don't have to write about stormtroopers. And so I'm trying to model some of the things that we might write down in our introduction to our research. And so in the introduction I'm giving a little bit of background um, and introducing the things that we're measuring and why this research is being done. So we'll get on to the why in a second. So they're both clone troopers and stormtroopers are genetic clones of one individual. Therefore they are expected to exhibit identical physical characteristics. That's sort of our basic premise of the work. However, there is anecdotal evidence that suggests that Imperial Stormtroopers exhibit unexpected variation from the original public, uh, Republic clones. So what I'm saying is, back then, the uh, clone troopers were exhibited certain characteristics, and there's reports starting to come in that are saying perhaps the um, Stormtroopers are beginning to behave in a slightly odd way fashion or something has changed. By the way, the, uh, the, I, I will use uh, these images extensively. I encourage you to go to the Flickr page, um, especially if you get a little bit bored, and, and look at these uh, photographs of toy stormtroopers um, taken by this, uh, this person. You follow the link um, if that's your kind of thing anyway. Um, yeah, so there's anecdotal evidence. That just means these reports come in, but it's not really substantiated by any, any research. And so we set, set up a, a general research question and say that this, uh, this research will explore whether the physical characteristics of stormtroopers are different from those of Republic clone troopers. So we're just trying to find that has something changed physically in these, in these individuals, even though they should be identical genetic clones. And now for the purpose of this piece of research, we'll now set up uh, some specific hypotheses that we'll test. So we have a general research question, but actually the things we're going to test in this piece of research, so this could be a paper, a thesis, um, whatever, are these things. So now we have uh, the assumption of our null hypothesis, or hypotheses, we're going to have two null hypotheses. One is that the height of stormtroopers is no different to that of clone troopers. And the other null is that the weight of stormtroopers is no different to that of clone troopers. 
we have a cross-sectional design. All that means is that uh, we have data that was collected at uh, a defined point in time. And for clone troopers, we have retrospective medical records because they were from a past era and we, can't, we don't want to measure them now. We want to know what their characteristics were then. Um, but data on current stormtroopers was gathered specifically for this project during annual medical checks. So now I'm building up my materials and methods section of this exciting paper that will be uh, published in Nature Galactica. And so all troopers were randomly selected by computer program. Imperial stormtroopers were notified of inclusion at their medical examination. And the study was explained to the troopers and they were asked to consent because of course this is an ethical study. Um, then what did we do? Well we recorded the height and weight of stormtroopers as well as perhaps some other um, parameters. Um, and this was recorded by the medic that was seeing them as part of their routine check. And the data was made available to the research team. The height and weight of clone troopers were obtained, so clone troopers being the past era, the Republic guys, were obtained from randomly selected historical records. Uh, because there's lots of these records, we don't want to look at all of them, we're just going to select a sample of them. Having no prior knowledge of the distributions, an initial sample size of 100 troopers was chosen. 100 Republic and 100 Imperial, so 100 of each. Because we don't know anything about them, so we've got to start somewhere, right? And perhaps we might justify that on it being 1%, say, of all, all military personnel um, serving at the time. So there's the background, and there's the experiment that's been done. And the reason for talking through that is not, again, because I find this um, lots of fun, but actually, I do, but... But actually it's because the statistical analysis that we do forms an integral part of any research project. It's not the bit that we tag on because someone told us we have to do stats and we need a, a stats test to, get, to give us significance. And so actually we, we build it in from the beginning because it's part of how you do um, analyses of experimental research data. So now we come to the results section. But this is where we apply um, some testing and it allows us to give concise reporting of our data. So the first thing we need to do is, or I would suggest that we do, because we've already said that we don't know anything about the data, so we've taken 100 uh, individuals. The first thing that we should do is to uh, visualize the height. And this is where we go interactive.